Hey, what's up guys? My name is George and today I just got my hands on the brand new Pixel C220 which is a 220 watt LED light, continuous light and we're gonna compare it to the Aperture 300D Mark II. Now, I've heard a lot of specs about it and I've heard a lot of good things about it on videos but I wouldn't dare say it's an Aperture killer. I could say it's an alternative if you don't have the budget for this one. Now, on paper it says it has more lux output then this one, I do not know how that's achievable since it's less wattage and the Cobb LED on the front is actually smaller on the Pixel C220. I measured this and it measures 1 inch versus 1 inch 3 fourths on this one. So it should be less bright by obvious reasons but I'm not sure why they say it's as bright or a little bit brighter than this one. So we're going to actually measure both of them with my measuring tape to one meter and we're gonna switch these two reflectors to see if that has any difference to the light output that these put. We're actually also gonna check the audio on these two to see how, well actually here, how much fan noise these make at 100%. We're gonna leave them for a bit so the fans kick in and we actually see how noisy they are. And we're also gonna test how these actually look as a key light. Now I've noticed just by turning this one on and the other one that this one is more yellow and I really don't understand why. This is 5500 Kelvin which should be leaning towards, I mean it's daylight but it leans towards a little bit the yellow and this is 5600 Kelvin so that means it should be wider than this one. I mean that's, that's the numbers, that's facts but it's actually more yellow and you're gonna see that in this video and you're gonna compare it to yourself to see which one you like best. This one has a CRI rating of 97 and a TCLI of 99. So that's higher than the Aperture 300D Mark II. The Aperture 300D Mark II has a CRI of 96 and a TCLI of 97. So in terms and numbers, like I said before, this one seems to beat it in that sense. But in actual real test, that's what we're gonna find out. In terms of build quality, the Pixel C220 is way behind the apertures. Just check out this cooling system on the top. Now it's way bigger on the Aperture 300D Mark II because it has two fans. This one only has one fan and that's a big drawback because if you have a smaller or just one fan that means it has to spin faster so that means more noise to actually cool it. Now we have to consider this is 220 watts and this is 300 watts so maybe that's because they use one of these but I rather made it a bigger body and put in two fans or a bigger fan to lower that noise from the fan that we're actually going to see in a bit here actually and in terms of the body and the quality of these aluminums they're kind of same structure I would say I do like the tiny knob on the Aperture 300D this one is a little bit flimsy and you can see it's way smaller than this one you can see it's way bigger over here and it doesn't tighten as much um, in terms of the reflector like I showed you before this one it's much bigger which could be a good idea unless you want to have more of a narrow light with this one like a spot then this one would be the one for you and in terms of the case that they come with I could probably say I could sit on the aperture and I won't bend it and on the pixel one it's actually pretty flimsy I mean you, you get a bag right but it you can actually use you, you can see it there I mean if I sit on this it's just it's just gonna smush just as plain as that and in terms of the power system power cords it comes with a power brick right here and it comes with this little I don't know hanger for the power brick trust me I haven't found how to actually hang the power brick from what I mean there's no screws here there's it's nothing it's just I'm not sure how it works but it's there and it has a remote control like this one and on the aperture, well, I know you've seen a whole bunch of videos and it comes with really good cables and long cables and it comes with a power brake. Now in terms of what these lights do, well, the aperture, you know, it connects to your phone. It has lighting effects with lightning, TV and a whole bunch of other things that you can do with it. And there's nothing on here, right? So it's just the body, you connect it and there's nothing in the back. There's nothing there but the cable. And on the Pixel, we have your controls so this one doesn't connect to an app but you have 
your on and off switch. You can turn on the fan. You can force it to turn on or you can force it to turn off. You have the range to control the brightness right here. You have preset modes right here. So you can set a preset mode. So for example, I'm in my room right here in my studio and I have to have it at 30%. Well, that could be one preset. And if I got to have to go to the kitchen or somewhere else, then that could be preset too and set to 85% brightness because I know that's what I need there. And we also have the remote option right here and there is no lighting effects and just the last button is for the channel so nothing fancy about it and the price tag on this one is $500 while the Aperture 300D is $1,100 now it's even cheaper than the Aperture 120D because the 120D Mark II is $750 so you're getting more output with a cheaper price tag with the Pixel C220. But at the end, I'm gonna tell you my better deck of what I think of this light after we do some testing. So let's jump into the fan noise test. All right guys, now for the sound noise test, I got my doctor meter right here and we're not gonna do a test on 0% nor 50% because the fans don't kick in. Even though I'm not, I don't have air conditioning, um, there's no point to it, I already tested it. So um, we're gonna skip that one and we're gonna go to the 100% on this one so we're gonna go 100% and see how much noise the pixel c220 makes starting off so let's kick it on there we go that's 100% and the lowest on the doctor meter is 42 decibels so let's see if it actually makes the noise it's actually on yeah it's really really spinning really slow but it's on So no sound on a fan noise when you first start off, even though it's on, no noise, we're okay. So let's wait a bit. I'm gonna fast forward the video until the fan noise pulls up, right? So once it starts heating up, the fan should start spinning faster and we should get some noise from it. So let's, let's wait a bit for that one to kick in. So fan noise kicked in, so let's hear it. Can't see it. Fifty five point one decibels on this one. Now I could hear it, and probably you could too. All right, so that's fan noise on this one. And now let's start off with the aperture at one hundred percent. So that's ten percent. Let's go all the way. All right, so that's 100%. And the fans are actually off. Yeah, they're off, so no point in checking that. Let's wait till the fans kick in. So let's give it some time. All right, fans turned on. They don't sound like full blast, but let's see. Forty-five point five decibels on this one, and I'm gonna give it more time, so the fans turn even louder. So let's give it more time. All right, guys. Well, the sound is still the same. Forty-five point five decibels. I don't see it kick here it kick in even higher but I, I do think it would spin faster but it, there's not enough room temperature for it to go that high so in terms of sound noise a clear winner for the aperture 300d mark ii and before we jump into the key light test for me showing you how that looks um i want to talk to you about remember i told you the color temperature on this one being 5600 kelvin and this one being 5,500 Kelvin, so it should be a little bit, I mean, you won't notice it, but it's, it should be a little bit yellow, yellower than the other one. And I do notice this one's more yellow, so let me show you when I turn these on. 
All right, and I'm actually gonna lower them to 50% just to show you on my hand. All right, so that's 50% and 50% on the aperture. And just really quickly, I mean, I'm not sure if you could notice that on the video, but I do, I do see a little bit more yellow. All right, so we're gonna start off with the Lux test. I have separated these lights exactly one meter apart from the reflector to this wall. And I've downloaded this app, which is a Lux tester, and we are going to do this test. So let's start off at 50% for the aperture with its original reflector. So let me turn this on. It's 150, 50% and I will put this right here on my wall. I am going to reset the sensors up here, so no problem. Reset. And the maximum lux is 15,280 for this light. So now let's do it for the pixel. Let me turn this on. So it's at 50% and I'm gonna point it right here and I'm also gonna reset it. So the max output I see right here is 5,498. Let me just move it around right here, close to the wall, just in case I might get a higher reading. And the highest reading I've got is 5,800. Okay, now let's go up to 100%. Again, now let's start off with the aperture. I'm gonna go higher, 100%. Put it on the wall right here, I'm going to reset it. And that's 29,497 lux. All right. Remember with its original reflector. Now this one, and let's go all the way to 100%. And again, put it on the wall. We are going to reset it. And I am getting 9,178 as the max lux on this one. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch both of these, oh, that's right, switch both of the reflectors to test them at 100%, just to see what happens. Is it going to go higher? Is it going to go lower? Let's just find out what's going to happen. So let me turn this off and switch them. All right, so now I've switched the reflectors on these two. We have the Pixel C220 reflector on the aperture, and let's put it at 100% and see what happens. So let me put it right here. I am going to reset it and we are getting a max lux of 14,680. All right, now for the pixel with the reflector of the aperture. All right, so reset again. And I am getting a max output of 19,231 with the other reflector. And I am going to do one more test. I am going to remove the reflectors and I'm going to put them a little bit closer so they're actually one meter because without the reflector, they're moving up, uh, away from it. So let's move reflectors and do the test. So let me get to that. So one meter from the wall with no reflector, just the LED light. So at 100%, let's see what happens. Let me reset it. And I am getting the max rating at 11,275. All right, now for the pixel. That's crazy bright. Let's put it right here. And let me reset it. And we are getting 6,714 as the max output. So that's a huge difference. And it's due to the size of the COP LED and the wattage of this one. So like I said before, I'm not sure why on paper they're saying something else. So next test will be the Aperture Dome Light Mini as a key light on both of them. Same distance, same everything, just to see how that looks on my face. Now for the key light test. It is at a distance of 1.6 meters straight at me. There's no top or down low or anything. It's just straight at my face with the Aperture Light Dome Mini 2. Now 10%. 
Now for my final thoughts on these two lights, starting with the sound. You clearly saw that the aperture was a clear winner with a lower decibel with the fan noise. So that was lower noise with the aperture. And in terms of color accuracy, you can see that the Pixel C220 leaned a little bit towards yellowish. My walls are gray. I mean, they're gray, dark gray, and they kind of turn a little bit yellowish with the Pixel C220. So I think the color accuracy winner would be the Aperture without a doubt. And in terms of the Lux rating output, you also saw that it's a clear winner with the Aperture coming out at way more higher rating than the Pixel C220. And in terms of the key light test that I made, I kind of liked more the C220. I'm not sure why, but give me your thoughts of what do you think about those key light tests. And overall, I think that the Aperture is the clear winner on this test, but I mean, the Aperture costs $1,100 and the Pixel C220 costs $500. So that's less than half than what the Aperture cost. Now, if you ask me, would I buy again the Pixel C220? I would say not. I would not buy it unless I'm on a budget and I can't afford the Aperture. I'd rather buy the Aperture 120D instead of this one, but even that is $250 more than the Pixel C220. So that's something that you have to consider in terms of your budget. But if you didn't have that budget, then that's a good light. I mean, it has a good output for the price. It has a good color rating, even though in this test, I'm not sure why it, did that, it didn't do that well, even though my camera was set to 5,600 Kelvin. So it should have been more accurate on the Pixel than on this one, because that one's 5,500 Kelvin. But man, those are the results. You saw them for yourself. There's no tricks. There's nothing going on here. These are plain tests that I, would, I love to do them. And I am not a professional. I know I'm not doing the super test like most other YouTubers are doing. But if you guys like this video, if you found it helpful, I will leave a link to this in the description for these two lights. Those are affiliate links. If you buy through those links, it helps me out. It supports me to keep buying lights and keep making tests for you guys. And in terms of tests, give me your tips, give me your thoughts on the comments, and let me know what else I should test or what I should do better. Well guys, my name's George and I'll see you guys later.